Good day everyone, welcome to this demonstration of Glue Edge Cloud Native API Gateway via GitOps. Um, what we'll be doing in this demonstration today is take uh, a few minutes just to understand what Glue Edge is and give an overview of what a Cloud Native API Gateway is. Um, and then we'll look at how to provision and manage um, Glue Edge via um, GitOps tools uh, and today we're looking at Flux and Flagger. So the demonstration part will essentially cover going from a fresh um, nothing uh, installed Kubernetes cluster to progressive application delivery. Um, so the demonstration will do a bootstrap into the fresh Kubernetes cluster will then incrementally secure an application via Glue Edge in the cluster via GitOps um, and then also look at an automated canary um, application delivery. Uh, so what is Glue Edge Enterprise? Um, Glue Edge Enterprise is an API gateway um, that is developed on Envoy, uh, and Envoy is the open source service proxy for distributed systems. Um, it's really the de facto for distributed systems and therefore communities. Um, and to be uh, Kubernetes native means to be driven by a declarative manifest. Uh, Glue Edge, of course, um, as an API gateway, needs to deliver uh, enterprise requirements, um, and this slide just um, highlights a few of those. Um, what we'll be looking at today specifically is the Kubernetes native way that Glue Edge has been engineered, um, and that will boil down to custom resources. Everything you need to do can be declared by a custom resource and a YAML manifest. Uh, and we'll look how to use that to add authentication via um, OAuth and OIDC. Um, we'll add rate limiting, uh, TLS encryption, um, and even do some, some routing via the application um, delivery process. Um, and then of course, we also do uh, a bit of transformation just to deliver show some of the key capabilities an API gateway should have um, and specifically how uh, cloud native API gateway um, allows you to deliver and provision these things um, via GitOps um, and this is just an illustration of what I mean by Kubernetes native and custom resources so Glue Edge will be driven via um, YAML manifests um, and because we have a file that is a YAML manifest we can check that into source control um, and that's really one of the foundational bits of GitOps. Um, so everything that we need to do within Glue Edge we can do in this declarative uh, YAML manifest fashion. Um, do take it a bit of time to um, look at our product pages uh, on Glue Edge and, and other products. Um, this demo does assume you are familiar with API gateways and, and probably GitOps and, and Flux and Flagger to a degree. Um, so if you're not, um, go back to our um, product pages and the Flux and Flagger product pages as well. Um, so really, the reason we are here is, is to look at Glue Edge Enterprise um, provisioning and configuring it via GitOps. Um, and for GitOps today, we'll use Flux and Flagger. Both of those are open source projects um, and uh, are owned by Weaveworks. So what is GitOps? Um, I think most people have a definition of what they believe um, GitOps is. Um, but essentially it boils down to having a single source of truth for the system's desired state. So we are able to declare the desired state we want into a manifest and um, Git is that single source of truth. 
and because git is used um, we get the ability to control changes via git pull requests um, and also rollback and audit um, so git really provides us those other fundamental requirements around change um, and there we can see here where we have on the left hand side <coughs> A environment where innovation building testing is happening it's um, maybe considered to be dangerous um, and the people involved here um, you know we don't want them to have access on our more stable operations and production side so so how do we achieve this um, and that that's really via automation um, so remove the human being from the process um, and um, we want to um, be sure that there's a process and controls firewall between this dynamic and dangerous environment and into production but have it automated and as safe as possible uh, and that's where, where GitOps really shines in, in this model um, a way I like to describe GitOps as well is, is to look at it um, in the sense that um, Kubernetes really removed the requirement for um, humans, developers, cluster admins to SSH into machines to configure applications and platforms. So you no longer need to use SSH, you're using kubectl. And, and GitOps goes a step further where you know humans no longer need to use kubectl they just need to um, use git to commit changes into git and um, that's a good way of looking at it as well um, so what is Flux? Flux is a GitOps tool uh, and um, I highlight it as for the platform so um, Flux um, install three key controllers into your Kubernetes cluster, the source controller uh, and the source controller really uh, looks at where your um, source of truth is, whether that's GitHub or GitLab or any Git operating uh, Git source control system. Um, and the controller purely looks at these repositories for any change in manifests and as soon as a change is detected um, it will be pulled in um, and that's that's another interesting way of how Flux does GitOps is that um, we no longer have external systems maybe some other continuous delivery system like Jenkins or Atlassian Bamboo where you have a workflow with a service account and that service account have permissions to be able to push changes into your um, cluster um, Flux um, pulls in changes so no external system to your cluster has uh, any privilege uh, permissions to, to make changes um, so that's what the source controller will do and as the source controller finds uh, a new update to the repository the um, customization controller will pick that up um, and the customization controller of Flux is able to translate those manifests into API calls to your community's cluster and essentially effect that change that you declared in your manifest um, of course certain packages, services, um, applications will use Helm to install um, so Flux also has a Helm controller and the Helm controller again also um, you will declare a source for the Helm uh, release and um, as the source controller detects a change there the Helm controller will find that uh, and affect the Helm based change into your Kubernetes cluster Also, we'll be looking at Flagger, um, and Flagger is, is more for the application side of um, delivery. Um, so once the platform is in place and all the platform services and applications are installed, typically a developer will make changes, uh, have a new image available, new version of the application available. How do we safely deploy that new version into 
the platform um, and Flagger uh, gives that capability to developers and, and automates a canary deployment. So we'll be looking at how Flagger um, detects that a new version of the application is available. Um, it will automate um, changes into Glue Edge API Gateway to control how traffic is being directed to um, the old and the new version of the application. Um, and it will use metrics to evaluate whether this new Canary version is healthy and performant. And based on the metrics, it will decide whether to promote or roll back. Um, so we'll see how Flagger really um, has been engineered to automatically configure Gateway, the a no, Blue Edge API Gateway, um, to assist with automated Canary deployments. So let's look at the demo. Um, in the demo, what we'll do, we'll have a clean Kubernetes cluster, um, as you can see here. Um, so if we look at what's currently available, um, we'll see we essentially have a basic Kubernetes cluster with MetaLB and Core DNS, and, and that really allows us to start provisioning applications into it. Um, so the bootstrap process will be um, creating the flux controllers um, once the controllers are in place they will start looking at the source sources that we have defined uh, and they'll use those sources to start configuring the cluster so um, we'll be installing applications we'll be installing uh, platform services um, uh, during the bootstrap process. Um, all application architectures have secrets, so you can think of passwords, uh, SSL certificates with private keys, tokens, um, those sort of secrets um, need to be part of the solution as well. Um, there are many options that you can use. You might be storing that in Vault or in similar um, secret management services. Um, in this case, uh, for this demonstration, we'll be using SOPs. Um, and SOPs really allow us to um, continue using declarative manifests to um, check into GitHub. Um, but obviously those manifests are encrypted. Um, and so um, with SOPs, um, we create a secret within the cluster um, the private key will allow the cluster to uh, decrypt the encrypted manifest from github uh, for the application there is a tls certificate um, and that's the secret that uh, currently sits within a github repository um, in an encrypted fashion and flux will automatically uh, be able to pull in that secret and create that secret within the cluster so that um, we can use it to secure our application. Um, once we have the um, bootstrap kicked off, we'll, we'll look a little bit closer at the repository and the custom resources and resources um, that really um, builds on uh, what we're doing here today. Um, we'll, once everything is a installed and ready, um, we'll look at how to configure Glue Edge API Gateway. Um, and during that process, we'll be adding the TLS encryption to the application. We'll be adding OIDC-based authentication to the application. We'll be um, protecting the application with rate limiting um, and also do some response transformation. Um, and the key thing to see during this part of the demonstration is that there is no refactoring of the application required for any of these capabilities to be added and that's really the power of Blue Edge and, and API gateways is that it abstracts the application developer from these concerns and, um, and then GitOps allow us to really automate um, the configuration of, of these capabilities. Uh, and then lastly We'll go into um, Flagger, the Flagger side, and uh, automated Canary 
promotion. So, so during this stage, we'll we'll see how um, a new version is detected, and then incrementally, um, traffic um, is promoted to that new version until it's deemed to be safe, and then finally promoted as the new um, production version. Um, all of uh, these steps are available via um, a blog page on Solo IO blog. Um, so you'll see I'll be using a Git repository. Um, do go to our Solo IO blog space, um, search for GitOps, and, and you'll see plenty of um, GitOps articles in there, um, including the one we're using today. Okay, so let's kick off the bootstrap. Um, as I've said, I have created a Kubernetes cluster already. Uh, today I'm using MicroKH. You could use any Kubernetes cluster, um, whether it's a cloud-based EKS or GKE or Kind or whatever you may choose to have. Um, I've set up a few environment variables um, and also prepared the um, git repository um, so you can see here uh, created 40 minutes ago so with those things ready um, we can start with the demonstration so I always run um, the flux CLI check just to make sure that everything is going to work from that point of view we are able to connect to the community's cluster um, so we can start the flux bootstrap process so the bootstrap process will go ahead and start installing the flux controllers um, it will set up its read-only um, secrets to be able to check all of the source um, sources that are declared like this git repository um, and uh, once it's completed that it will um, use that git repository to start using the customization controller to start um, implementing the manifest we've declared there um, we'll look a little bit more at the manifests and so on as well once we um, have flux um, bootstrapped and um, that will um, install quite a few services and of course that will take a few minutes so we'll, we'll take that time to to look at the repository and how it is used to configure the platform uh, you'll see at this stage it's just starting with the flux controllers uh, and the source controller it's the last bit um, it's doing now based on my private git repository so my private git user username and my um, private git um, personal access token um, those are the pieces of information that's required to bootstrap those pieces of information is not stored in flux anywhere or within kubernetes um, it's just for this bootstrap um, it's required so that um, flux can set up the sync mechanism with the repository okay so that has completed um, i'll show you what this pull command does um, with um, the bootstrap uh, certain uh, manifests are created in the um, repository so um, I just pull them down as well so the local and remotes are equivalent um, here um, I'm now starting to activate the secrets management so this is where um, the first command I've exported the private key required to decrypt the secrets in github um, so obviously for demonstration purposes uh, I've just used my local laptop as the private key store and I've extracted it from that private key store 
um, and then I created the secret that um, Flux can um, use to uh, have access to the private key and that private key uh, allows it to decrypt any secrets that are declared in a separate um, GitOps GitHub repository. So let's have a quick look at the GitHub side. Um, this is the repository for Flux. Um, and as you see, um, after the bootstrap, we can now see that the cluster staging um, is where Flux have added a few of the source controller manifests. So that was part of that bootstrap process uh, and what I pulled down. Um, so uh, what I want to show you as well is the secrets repository. Um, so that's a completely separate repository um, and in there we have uh, the certificate declared secret um, but as you can see the important private key information is encrypted uh, and only the flux controller has the private key in the cluster to decrypt this information. So what we will see now while the rest of the platform is being provisioned, let's have a look. The key thing to see here is that with provisioning platforms, there are dependencies and, and Flux have uh, derivatives inside it that allow you to declare these dependencies. So before we can install the application, we need the infrastructure, the, the Glue Edge application at the I gateway to be installed. Um, so what we what I have done is declared that within the repository for Flux as well. I'm saying do not install any of the applications until the infrastructure is ready. So let's have a quick look at that. Here we can see within the Flux customization declaration, there's a depends on infrastructure. Uh, and then if we look at the infrastructure declaration, what I have put in place there is a health check to tell um, the infrastructure provisioning once the Kubernetes deployment of the gate, gateway has completed successfully, you can declare the infrastructure um, installation as successful and therefore you can start with the application layering. So very, very handy little tips that um, when it comes to building complex platforms, you know, we are installing um, multiple applications at this stage, multiple platform services. Um, so these have dependencies and you need to be able to control that and, and Flux makes that pretty easy with its depends on and health checks options. Uh, we can see that the GitOps secrets has completed so at this stage we expect to see a new secret that has been created automatically um, within the system uh, and there we have the upstream TLS so that's the TLS certificate that we'll be using to secure traffic provide TLS encryption to the application um, so that's ready to be used um, once we get to that stage. Um, and then we can see here that while it was encrypted in GitHub, um, over here it has been decrypted. We can have a look at that. We 
which is of course required for this to work. Okay, so um, lastly we'll kick off um, uh, provisioning. Let's have a look at what's happening at the cluster level. As I said, um, a lot going on there uh, and why it takes a few minutes. So Flux installed, um, the infrastructure services for Blue Edge API installation is happening. Flagger is installing. We are installing applications as we're going to need them. Um, and you can see Key, key Cloak is what we'll be using for installing uh, or adding OIDC authentication to the application. So uh, Key Cloak has been installed. Um, what we need to do is add a few users to the Key Cloak data store um, so that we actually have a user that we can use to authenticate um, into the application. So um, we've just set that up. Um, let's have a look. Essentially, Blue Edge is your API gateway, your ingress from the client side into services in the cluster. Um, but now we have uh, Key Cloak already installed and we've configured Key, Key Cloak with the users so that we can uh, authenticate into the services. <coughs> Okay, so while that ticks away, let's have a look at um, the Git repository structure. Um, essentially, um, the structure is at a high level, got three levels, which is the application and infrastructure. So applications is where the, your developers will be pushing their images um, and code. Um, and we have the base application. So this is, you know, the generic application, how how it's declared and how it needs to be installed, everything it needs to, to run in Kubernetes. Um, but then also, um, each application might have slight differences for each environment. So in staging, the application has a, a different authentication configuration perhaps, um, and we're able to just bring in those little customizations per environment via a, a very easy structure and an easy um, YAML manifest declaration. And, and we'll see these during the demonstration as well. Uh, as you can see, the resources, this is uh, normal Kubernetes native um, manifests uh, for custom resources that are declared um, and we'll be configuring these um, as need be, checking them back into GitHub. Um, the source controller will detect that, the customization controller will detect that and uh, apply them automatically into the cluster. Uh, on the infrastructure side, um, we are installing Blue Edge API Gateway, we're installing Key Cloak um, and Flagger as well. So these are more platform level services um, and we are able to essentially um, do the same as per applications, provide any um, environmental customizations as need be. But these services uh, automatically get installed based on the Git repository. So we can see this directory structure in here, so applications, base, all the applications that we want, how they are installed, um, and then in staging, they may have their each little customization that's required. Uh, on the infrastructure side, we have the infrastructure services, uh, uh, Helm declarations on where the Helm repository is uh, and all the required parameters for that. And these are all now installing. So Let's have a look at our customizations. Let's see Okay, we can see 
that the infrastructure side has completed um, that allowed the applications to install as well so at this stage we're expecting to see um, most of the required components are up and running so at this stage as, an, as I've said um, with a few bootstrap commands we were able to install platform services applications um, and you know everything was done in an automated fashion we, we haven't even made any declaration uh, commits into git um, so let's start looking at that um, so we've done the bootstrap now we want to say okay um, this application should now be up and running great so everything has been automatically installed so far but the application is using HTTP um, plain text um, and we want to start securing the application and we're going to demonstrate how to do that without refactoring the application so let's add TLS encryption use that certificate secret that was created um, to add TLS encryption so this is where we start looking at the resource manifest um, I've obviously pre-prepared them just so that um, we don't spend too much time looking at updates to manifest um, so this custom resource is a virtual service resource which is a blue edge re custom resource um, and a virtual service is telling the API gateway where to listen um, and how to to route traffic um, so this is essentially creating that listener on the um, proxy side um, and it's telling it when request comes to this listener how do we route it uh, and we want it to go to the Kubernetes default pet clinic um, application and we'll come back to this custom resource to add other capabilities as well so any request coming into the API gateway um, will be routed to this backend at this stage and now we said okay well we want to add TLS encryption to this application so all we need to do is update the virtual service um, and then push that into get no SSH no kubectl um, so the commit has gone in let's look at our customizations and here we can see another tip um, that we can use the um, commit short handle to check whether the source controller has picked up the change and whether the customization controller has implemented that so the current release is still the old one um, the new one is 54d um, so if we have a look we can see now it's picked it up and it's started the reconciliation so this change should be in in the next few seconds okay great we can now see that that commit has been reconciled uh, and the application should now not work on port 8080 anymore um, so close that and if we go to HTTPS you can see that the certificate and everything is ready to use very very powerful capability of API gateways to add the security to applications without requiring application refactoring okay so that's great um, we've now got TLS encryption um, so that allows us to take it the application security a step further where we can say well we now want to add authentication to the application so we're going to integrate with um, Keycloak or OIDC uh, and use the, uh, the user credentials we created in there 
to provide authentication to the application. And again, all we're doing is we're going into um, a manifest file, checking everything in, and um, that will allow us to commit the change and effect the change without requiring to go to kubectl or the cluster in any way. If I just remember that with this, there we go. So for the authentication uh, configuration and integration, we, we need to tell Clue Edge where is the OADC service. Um, so we need to provide some parameters in the authentication configuration manifest. Uh, first thing is the application URL that we are protecting. Let me update that. And then there will be the secret that it needs to use, the client ID, so that Keycloak can trust this request. And then lastly, we just configure the Keycloak URL. So with the of config resource in Clue Edge, um, we are able to configure um, OIDC authentication based systems, uh, OAuth, um, any any number of options are available. Um, in this case, we're just using Keycloak. Um, so that's configuring. That's telling Clue Edge where the OIDC service is. Um, Keycloak. Then we need to go to the application. Um, so we're going to the application repository and we're saying, okay, in your customization, we are now adding that authentication configuration. So again, a little bit pre prepared so that we don't sit here too long um, and looking at typing. Um, and then the last bit that we need to do is go to the application's virtual service. So this is where we have the listener and, and tell the listener now as traffic is coming in, um, it needs to be directed to the external authentication service. Um, we've just declared that authentication service in the manifest as well. And then to effect and add authentication, we commit into get. So let's look at the customizations. As we see, we, this time it's already picked it up. Um, so a little bit quicker. Obviously, the intervals um, is configurable, um, lots of flexibility within how you declare how these controllers check and what they check um, so and there we can see that that change has already been affected so now what we expect is to be prompted for authentication so let's authenticate great excellent so again no application refactoring um, and no interaction with the cluster as such, only get commits. Um, so that's that's really the, the power of um, Kubernetes native um, and um, the effect of uh, Glue Edge being uh, Kubernetes native as well. It is developed to work with that um, Kubernetes native, native um, resources. Okay, let's continue with securing the application. 
Uh, another key capability of uh, API gateways will be um, rate limiting. So often, um, you know, some applications need to be guarded um, in terms of rate limiting. Um, people overusing something may take resources from more important services in the um, cluster. So rate limiting is, is one of those API gateway capabilities that organizations very quickly um, need to look at. So um, we'll enable rate limiting. Uh, again, we go into the customization so that Flux knows we are making a change uh, and what it needs to affect that change. Um, so yeah, we are told it to look at the rate limit YAML manifest. Um, so let's see what that is going to do. Um, better way to see that is probably in here. Um, and we can see it's a it's a simple Glue Edge custom resource again. Um, and here we declare that um, there's a rate limit of 10 requests per minute um, with this rate limit policy. So nothing too wildly exciting there. Uh, so we go to the applications virtual service again. Um, and we enable that rate limiting policy. And we commit that. And then look for the reconciliation. So still on the old configuration, waiting for the new commit to be reconciled. Lucky these things can be forced, but yeah, you know, generally it's not necessary. Just need to pay a bit of patience in this very automated world that we're in. Even waiting for reconciliation feels too much. But there we see that's now been applied, so we've got the new configuration ready to test. So with rate limiting, we said this application um, should now um, be rate limited to only 10 requests per minute. Um, and to see that, um, we'll use the develop tools in the application. And here we can see um, that the rate limit policy has kicked in for to nine, too many requests uh, has been applied um, obviously that was less than you know so 10 requests but it's a microservice architecture there's many asynchronous calls happening um, you know not not that important for this demonstration um, but you can see that that change has been affected again um, but not a very user friendly um, and good user experience here so um, let's use the API gateways capability to affect the transformation to change that response to the end user. Um, so again, we're able to go to our virtual service for the application um, and in there add the transformation declarations. in the Glue Edge virtual service. And we can see that the transformation will be looking for that response code of 429 and then provide us a, a better uh, user experience in terms of the response. Um, so let's get out of that. And then we Effective 
Kit. Okay, I will take a few seconds or minutes. Uh, we can close over here. Shouldn't need that now. Uh, and what we should see is this nice blue response to the user telling it that um, the service is no longer available. Customizations can of course be done for numerous region, reasons that you will want to make these transformations. Um, so, um, HTML body request and response transformation is uh, probably one of the entry level ones. Okay, and yeah, we can see that transformation configuration has been added. So let's go back to the application uh, and refresh it. And there we can see that the API gateway has picked up the 429 um, and transformed that response. Um, and again, that is without making any application refactoring. So um, it may have felt quite laborious um, in, in configuring all of this, um, but this is for the demonstration. Uh, the demonstration is about Glue Edge API Gateway being cloud native, Kubernetes native, and that means you can use GitOps. And, and so we did a few iterations of that GitOps change, really, that, that, was, the, that was part of the point. Um, to see that a couple of times and to see how powerful it is, um, you know, a very business centric capability like an API gateway can easily and safely be configured in, in the GitOps fashion. Uh, it's not just for low level services. Um, so very, very useful. Of course, now that this manifest and all the manifests that we um, updated during this demonstration so far are committed into GitOps uh, and GitHub, there's, there's no requirement to redo that again. Uh, next time you want to build this um, API gateway, all of that will be in place and ready to be used. So let's go over to the next section where we are going to use Flagger to automate the Canary promotion. Um, and what we'll see here is that a new version of the application is found. Um, Flagger will use Prometheus metrics to test that new version and based on that we'll decide whether it should promote um, more traffic to that new version until eventually it's declared safe at 50% um, and the old production version is decommissioned and no longer receives traffic. So that shifting of traffic is done by Glue Edge, the API gateway. Again, a key capability of your API gateway is to be able to control traffic uh, in this fashion. And Flagger takes that control and automates it for you as well. So let's look at that. For Flagger, we um, have already installed it, so we can just have a look at that um, as part of that initial bootstrap process. Um, it was already configured. So we can see all the resources is ready. Uh, again, there's an application, so there's a virtual service telling Glue Edge where to listen and how to route that traffic to the application. Um, and then the key capability um, that Flagger automates is the update of the route table. Um, and it's the route table that we use to um, shift the traffic. Um, so Flagger will automatically update that. Previously, we were updating these by GitOps in a, in a manual fashion. Flagger will do that for us. Um, so part of Flagger, it, we need to tell it um, how do we define this canary deployment. Um, so uh, in this case, we are saying that um, we want to promote traffic in, in intervals of 10 seconds. Um, 
incremented by 5%. Um, once it reach, reaches that 50% traffic and everything is still healthy, um, we'll consider the Canaria successful. Um, and Flagger will look at metrics. It needs to know that this new application is healthy and performant. So a few metrics that it will look at is whether any 500 errors are being seen. Um, if that's happening, obviously it will wait before promoting. Um, it will also look at the 99 percentile uh, and make sure that that is less than five, 500 milliseconds. Um, so those will be the two criteria that it uses to determine the health and performance of the new version. Um, and based on that, it will continue with the rollout. If it doesn't meet any of these conditions, it will automate the rollback and stop the Canary deployment. Uh, in this case, we, um, you know, for this, for metrics to be generated, there needs to be load. So we've got a load generator um, that is going to take care of that for us in, in this optional sort of testing webhooks that's included in the Canary uh, manifest. Okay, so let's do that. Let's um, go and add a new deployment, telling it to use a new image. We are updating. Um, so what we should see is Flagger detecting uh, a new version is available so we can see it's already started and found a new version and it's starting the canary deployment and we'll see um, as it start shifting traffic we'll have a look at the glue edge resource that has been updated automatically so here we can see that flagger has advanced the canary deployment so traffic uh, has been shifted five percent and there we can see so here we have the glue edge custom resource um, that is being configured by Flagger for this Canary deployment. And we can see here metrics have shown that traffic is still good. So we should now see this route table has been updated accordingly as well. So the Canary is being slowly promoted in terms of more traffic in an automated fashion gone up to 20 25 and let that run through slowly walking through these steps now at 30% And with Glue Edge API Gateway, um, we are able to delegate this type of control to the developer level. So while the virtual service, we may feel that that needs to be at the cluster operator level, but application deployments, that's really up to the application owner and the developer teams. And um, so Glue Edge, um, allows you via route tables to, to, to delegate that function down to the application owner um, and you no longer need to rely on the API gateway operator to help with that deployment. So let's have a final look. So at 50% we said um, that is now considered to be healthy and we can see the route table has reached 50 percent flagger has determined that that new version is still performant and healthy and therefore all traffic is now switched to the new application 
Uh, and that's it really for the demonstration. Um, just wanted to take a few minutes to quickly run through that. I'll remind you to please go to Solar.io blogs where we have other GitOps um, tutorials and blogs. Um, this one has a blog there for the GitOps and, and steps that are used. Um, we have many other resources that you can look at as well. You can find us on Slack if you want to ask any questions. Um, hope to see everyone out there soon.